Ask Bibliophile Bot asks, Why the animosity in regards to Dr. Crane? Is there another layer to this? I must know. Oh, <laughs> has he been talking about me again? <laughs> that old rascal. Crane is obsessed with me, you see. It's one of the few things we have in common. <laughs> the Lord asks, Edward, you are by far the most attractive man ever to walk on the planet Earth. So tell me, what do you search for in a mate? <laughs> Behold! The green riddling peacock as it cocks its head and stares at you with what can only be described as an incredulously patronizing stare. As the stare burns to the back of your head, you feel certain that you are a cluster of microbes to this splendid, solitary creature. You are but protozoa belched out from the primordial soup. With every fiber of your tiny being, you know that you have wasted its precious time. There will be no mating ritual today, or indeed, any day. Your presence has already been forgotten. <laughs> Feathers the Kitten asks, Welcome, Mr. Nigma. Might I inquire, do you have any role models? Is there some figure, historical or otherwise, that you perhaps look up to? Hmm. There is no one like me. Has never been one like me. There's no singular figure to whom I aspire, so you'll have to be more specific. Example, genius role models? Tesla or Da Vinci. Criminal role models? None. Red-haired role models? Hmm. Leslie Howard. Riddling role models? Not goddamn Lewis Carroll, that's for certain. Get the idea? Anonymous asks, Welcome to Tumblr, Mr. Nigma. Riddle me this. What goes round the house and in the house but never touches the house? Is this some kind of handshake? Here's that riddle guy. I'll ask him a riddle. You've plucked out some bog ordinary riddle and presented it to me like I should be impressed, like I haven't seen them all before. For those among you who believe I need to prove myself, the response is the sun. But that is simply the widely accepted answer. How about you go find the joke guy and tell him a joke? He's always good for a punchline. Puzzle Pest asks, Mr. Riddler, would you please use that orgasming-inducing voice to say the following words? <laughs> Fuck off! Mr. Victor Freeze asks, Hello, Edward. Keeping tabs on the other rogues in Arkham, or are you simply bored? In any case, it's good to see that you're well. Mr. Victor Freeze? <laughs> Please. You don't give a damn for anyone's status but that of Frigid Nora. I doubt you even know what year it is. And shouldn't that be Doctor, not Mr.? Surely the Dane would never forget his hard-earned honorific. Sounds more like someone who operates a diner fry pan. Hop it, old sport. Anonymous asks, after all that stuff with Jessica, do you think you are actually capable of being in love with someone? I have no idea who this person is, but I wouldn't say that thinking and infatuation go hand in hand, would you? The Lode asks, your views on Jobathan Crane, Mr. E? <laughs> well, I'm a little rusty on this sort of thing, being a lapsed forced Catholic come relentless agnostic, but... I'll give it a try. <clears throat> Jobathin was a sneery sort of man with poor bone structure, overlong limbs, and a squint. He took perverse pleasure in observing the misadventures of others and made lots of notes in a little book. Satan himself, noting this perspicacity, blessed Jobathin with even more hideous looks to allow him to scare people on sight. In times when it wasn't prudent to frighten people like a male gorgon, he resorted to a potato sack to cover his face. Terrifying all those he met brought Jobathin greater pleasure than he had ever known, because indeed he had never known any other. 
In the rare event that his appearance did not have the desired effect, Jobathin developed a peculiar skill in alchemy, brewing a disgusting potion sure to strike the utmost fear into the heart of his enemies, which was everyone. Now, how did it end? <laughs> yes, like all happy endings, he died alone. <laughs> Oh, and who said religion was boring? Anonymous asks, So, what are you wearing? A look of disdain and a suit you could never afford. Tiny Israfel asks, Hello, Mr. Nigma. Nice to meet you in the technological sense, of course. Uh, I have a question. If Batman always cheats to solve your riddles and puzzles, why do you continue testing him? Clearly, his tendency to cheat marks him as a failure, and furthermore, proves that you are intellectually superior, of course. He does not seem to me to deserve more chances to prove his intelligence after failing too many times, especially by choosing cheating over wit and intellect to solve them. <laughs> It's hilarious to me that you believe a criminal would grasp at the straws of intellectual superiority in the face of dishonesty. Like dishonesty is something to be ashamed of. <laughs> I have the moral high ground, sir. I kidnapped and imprisoned everyone in this room, but you, you cheated. Surely I am the victor or it's not fair. <laughs> Good grief. Life isn't a game of chess. A criminal who insists that others play fair. Was I so paradoxical? Look, these little exercises of mine are not to challenge his intellectual capacity. I already know I'm best. It's to make myself cheat-proof and thus unstoppable because, believe it or not, I aim for goals higher than simply defeating the bat. In the beginning, I never sought his attention. It was him who barged into my business. Now I use that to my advantage as he unwittingly helps me with my inquiries. The poor thing. He simply can't stop himself from stopping me. It's like a compulsion. 